Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Matt Shaquan, AKA Recluse, here for Roland. Very excited to show you the TR6S Rhythm Performance today. This is our video manual, which is gonna cover the key features and functionality of the unit. If at any point you want more information, make sure to download the owner's manual from the TR6S product page, as well as sign up for our Roland Cloud Academy, which is a real-time online learning platform available for all registered customers of the TR6S. Let's open the box and see what we have here. All right, let's check out what we got. Starting with first and foremost, the TR6S. Portable, powerful, has a super deep drum library, including all your classic TR sounds, 808, 909, 707, 606. Also has an FM synth engine and has the ability to play one-shot samples, either the preset samples or your custom samples that you load in here with the SD card. It also runs off battery or USB power right here. A lot of fun to play with, tons of sliders and knobs. We're gonna get deep into it in just a little bit. Additionally, you also have four AA batteries, so you can get started right away. You have a Read Me First Guide just to get you started. And finally, a registration card. If you are a TR6S owner, make sure you register your unit at Roland.com. You're gonna get important emails about firmware updates, as well as an exclusive invite to Roland Cloud Academy, our interactive online learning platform. So let's start with an overview of the TR6S and the panels and the controls. Starting here with the volume knob, self-explanatory, turns your master level up and down. We also have a shift button here. This is actually really important to the functionality of the TR6S. So if I want to access any of these secondary functions silk screened underneath the buttons, I would hold shift to get to that. Alternatively, you can also use shift for changing values like in decimals on tempo, for instance. You can also use it to mute your tracks on and off if you want in TR record mode, like so. We also have a clear button, so if you want to erase programming data or track data, you can use that clear button. Pattern select, so you can access any of the patterns, which are basically another word for the beats that we're making. Uh, the secondary layer there is the pattern settings, which we'll get into. TR record, this is the button we're gonna use for step sequence programming any of the sounds on our TR6S. Step loop is a cool performance feature, which we'll show you a little bit later. And underneath that, we also have the last step function using the shift control. Substep is for creating ratcheting hi-hat sounds or other faster rhythms, which we'll cover. Uh, variation, so you have up to eight variations per pattern. So if you wanna make an eight bar pattern, you can access the variation and say, select all those like that. Also on variation, uh, and the secondary function is motion. So if you wanna record any automation, you're gonna use that motion function to do that. Insta record, uh, this is where you can play in your sounds live and record them live. And if you just wanna audition them or just play along without recording it, you'd hold shift and press that to get to Insta play. Finally, we have a start stop button, which pretty self-explanatory is gonna start or stop any pattern on your TR6S. So moving to the center of the TR6S, whereas the left side is used primarily for pattern editing and creation, as well as some performance features, this here has a lot of your controls. So starting with here with the controls, the knobs, you have a tuning, decay, and control. Uh, and the secondary functions controls the master effects, so the reverb, decay, and the general master effects, which, which can be set differently from those. Then we have our six sliders uh, that correspond to each one of your instruments, bringing the level up and down. Uh, and then we also have uh, the ability to change those colors so you can customize the color layout, which is pretty fun and cool. Uh, we also have our six instrument buttons here. So bass drum, snare drum, low tom, hand clap, close hat, open hat. Those could be interchanged with any other sounds if you want, but those are kind of the standard layout for those instruments. You can also access accent uh, by pressing bass drum and snare drum together. And then finally at the bottom, we have our 16 steps. Now this is primarily used for sequencing your, uh, each one of your drum tracks, but you can also use it for, as we said before, playing in sounds live or auditioning sounds. You can also use this for a roll function. And as we mentioned before, the variations within each pattern, you can access this here. Now on the right side of the TR6S, we have another panel. Uh, and this is primarily we're gonna access kits, instruments, samples, as well as utility functions. So starting with the kit, you have a button here, as well as editing the kit, you can just hold shift and press the kit button. 
Uh, we have the instrument button. So instrument in this case refers to the individual sounds that are on each track that make up the kit. And again, hold shift to edit those instruments. And then, as you know, the TR6S also has the capability of playing one-shot samples. And this is where you would manage and edit those samples, editing by holding the shift button to get to the sample edit menu. We also have a copy button uh, for copying patterns, instruments, etc. Utility button, which we'll get into later for some of the uh, deeper dive functionality. And we have an exit button if you need to get out of any menu. Now the value uh, knob here is also very crucial to a lot of the functionality. It of course turns left and right, but you can also press it in if you want to select something. We have a fill in button. This is actually for performance. So as you're playing, you can press the fill in button and it's either going to trigger a scatter effect or a predetermined fill in pattern that you've assigned to it just to break up what you're doing. We have a shuffle button to add some swing to your track. And finally, we have the tempo button that sets the beats per minute. And you can also tap that tempo in if you want to do it manually. And finally, let's have a look at the rear and front panels of the TR6S. We have our power switch here. USB port, SD card reader, MIDI input and output. We have our dual quarter inch outputs and a Kensington lock slot for securing your TR6S. And on the front panel, we have our eighth inch or 3.5 millimeter headphone output. Next up, let's talk about kits, instruments and samples, the sound library of the TR6S. Now this TR6S includes all the classic TR Roland drum machines including the 808, 909, 707, 606, and more. These are the staples of modern music, heard from the early 1980s and electro, classic, boom bap, all the way up to trap music of today. These sounds are created by ACB technology, which stands for Analog Circuit Behavior. These are detailed models of the original machines that actually can be edited in real time, unlike samples. Additionally, we've added an FM synth that allows you to access otherworldly, quite interesting sounds, intricate that you can edit on the fly and do some really unique sounding drums with. Finally, we also have the ability to play samples. So there's a really deep sample library in here as well that covers drum sounds, effects, chords, etc. As we mentioned before, instruments refer to the individual sounds that make up a kit. Now it's laid out on our tier success over these six tracks as follows. Bass drum, snare drum, low tom, hand clap, closed hat, and open hat. Now those categories aren't locked onto those tracks. You can actually decide to mix and match and assign different types of sounds to each one of those tracks, but those are laid out there just to help you organize them as you get into it. If you want to browse any of the sounds, choose which track and then press instrument button here, and you can just use your value wheel to scroll through your different options. You'll also notice that in the instrument menu, each instrument is assigned a different category. Now you can actually lock those categories in if you just say want to assign a bass drum. I would press the value knob like that. You'll notice the little brackets appear around BD for bass drum. And I can just turn this and that's going to lock me into bass drum. If I want to skip a category, I can hold shift while I've already locked it and then turn the value wheel and you'll see new categories appear. Snare drum, toms, rim shot, hand claps, hats, cymbals, percussion, effects, et cetera, et cetera. You'll also notice in the instrument menu icons next to each instrument. And this corresponds to P for preset, S for sample, L for loop, U for user, and F for FM based. Now to audition any of the sounds, pretty easy. All you do is hold shift and press your Insta record button to enter Insta play mode. And now your first six pads will correspond to the six tracks of your drum machine. So let's quickly check out some of the sounds, the classic TR-808. Bet you heard that before. Here's the 909. And then maybe some of the FM kits. So to edit your individual instruments, it's pretty easy. Hold shift, press instrument. Whatever instrument is selected on your six tracks here, will be the one you're editing. So in this case, we're going to edit the bass drum. Now I can scroll through my menu. You can see the various parameters that we have access to. Tuning, decay, attack, level, gain, panning. This is also where we control our reverb and delay sends, where we can access our low frequency oscillator and set the target 
as well as the depth. And you can also access your instrument effects here. Now, if you have a FM sound, you will also have access to the morph parameter. So let's quickly edit an 808 kick drum here, the bass drum. I'm gonna play it once there. Now, for the tuning of the decay, as we said before, you can access those parameters with these knobs here. So we can actually change the tuning with 808 just with this control knob. as well as the decay. So we can make the note longer or shorter. And then if we continue through our instrument edit menu, you can change other things like attack, which is gonna change the front end of the sound. So I press the value knob and then I can scroll down. If I wanna go quickly, I hold shift. So now you hear that the 808 has a softer sound. That bass drum is quite soft and then I can turn it up and it's a lot harder. The TR6S also has the ability to play one-shot samples. So the library actually contains over 300 custom samples that you can add to your kits to round out your TR and your FM sounds. You can also import your own custom samples via SD card. You have up to 180 seconds of sample time at 44.1 kilohertz sample rate. You can also edit any of the samples by holding shift and pressing sample. You can edit start time, end time, gain, the category of the sample, and the sample name. Once you've familiarized with the instruments and the samples, then you can check out the kits. The kits are basically the internal TR6S drum sets that can be either just classic TR kits or a mix and match of the TR sounds, FM sounds, and samples. So let's have a quick listen to what some of the kits sound like. I'm gonna play a pattern and we're gonna scroll through the kits and check it out. Once you've settled on a kit, you can now edit that kit by holding shift and press the kit button. The first thing you're going to see is an overall level for the kit, as well as a number of effects parameters you can edit, which we'll cover shortly. Now, if you're using your TR6S as a sound card with a DAW, you also have the ability to route audio from that DAW in here. And you could use features like sidechain, as well as set the gain of your input signal, the panning, or use the master effects on that input signal from your DAW. You also have access to an LFO, where you can set the waveform, tempo sync on or off, the rate of the LFO. You also have mute groups. So mute groups are generally used to have one sound mute another. Most commonly, that would be in the case of a closed hat muting the open hat. You can see that this closed hat is set for the open hat. Anytime a closed hat's gonna hit, the open hat will stop playing. You can also set the control parameter for all your instruments. Now you can do it universally by setting panning, reverb or delay send, LFO depth, instrument effects, or if you go to user, you can set individual control parameters for each sound. Kit edit is also where you can change the colors of your sliders. So going through each track, we can see they're selected different colors. And finally, this is where you can also rename the kit. The TR6S comes loaded with a multitude of effects. Those effects include single effects that can be used on individual instruments, known as instrument effects, or global effects like reverb, delay, or the master effects, which you can assign to your whole mix. The TR6S offers global reverb and delay effects that can be applied to any individual tracks using the sense. To select a reverb or delay type, go to Kit Edit, and choose from ambience, room, hall one or two, plate, or mod reverb. As you scroll to the right, you'll see different parameters that can be edited. Those parameters are specific to whatever reverb type you've selected. To get to the delay effects, continue scrolling to the right, and you can choose from a regular delay, panning, or tape echo. As you scroll into the parameters, those parameters are linked to whatever specific delay type you've chosen. You can now go into instrument edit and set the individual send amount per instrument. 
Now that you've set your individual reverb and delay send levels in instrument edit, you can now use your controller knobs here to adjust the global levels for your reverb and delay. Make sure that none of your tracks are selected and none of these knobs are illuminated. And then these will actually control, as we said, the reverb and the delay. Now we're gonna play a really dry pattern, no effects, and then I'll start bringing in those reverb and delay levels so you can hear the difference that adding those effects actually makes on the pattern. In addition to reverb and delay, the TR6S has a master effects processor that could be applied to and saved to any kit. Now the master effects are particularly good for cleaning up a mix or for using in performance situations. To turn on the master effects, click on your button right there. To edit your master effects, hold shift and press the master effects button. First choose what type of effect you'd like to use. You can choose from high, low pass filters as well as combo filter, frequency boosters, isolator, transients, compressors, drives and distortion effects, as well as phaser, flanger, sideband filter, and a noise generator. Let's check out some of the master effects. Once you've selected a master effect you want to use on your pattern, you can then edit it further by going to master effects and scrolling through the menu. Now we've currently have sideband filters selected. If I scroll to the right, I'm going to see parameters that are linked specifically to that effect. So in this case, band interval, balance, band width, type of sideband filter, gain, etc., etc. In addition to reverb, delay, and your master effects, you also have access to instrument effects, which are basically effects that can be applied to individual instrument sounds. To access those, hold shift, press instrument to get to the instrument edit menu. First, select the type. You can choose from various filters, frequency boosters, isolator, transient, compressor, drive, crusher, saturator, frequency shifter, ring modulator, or stereo spread. Once you have your various instrument effects locked in, you may want to edit some of the parameters of each one of those effects. To do that, you want to enter instrument edit mode and scroll to the right of the effects pages. In this case, I have a frequency shifter. So in the case of the frequency shifter, I have access to frequency, fine tuning, and balance. Okay, so you've got your instrument effects dialed in. You've adjusted the parameters to get it sounding just right. Now, how can you freak it in the mix? Well, you can actually assign those instrument effects to this control knob. To do that, you go Shift plus Kit to access your control page here, and you can assign a single parameter for all your instruments. Those could be panning, reverb send, delay send, LFO depth, or the instrument effects that's assigned to each one. Or you can also switch to User, which gives you ability to assign individual parameters to whatever track you've chosen. So for this example, let's have a listen to uh, an FM sound we've assigned to the open hat track and we've assigned morph to the control knob here. Now we can also use decay and tuning to further shape the sound.
Now that we have our sounds, let's make some beats. Beat sequences on the TR6S are known as patterns. These patterns include the sequencing information, as well as tempo, kit, and motion data. We'll get into that a little bit later. There are 64 preset patterns stored on the TR6S for you to explore, as well as 64 user patterns to make your own. Any of those patterns can be overwritten, so in essence, you have 128 patterns that you can make all for yourself. Patterns are organized into eight banks, and each bank contains 16 sequences. To access them on the TR6S, hold Pattern Select. First to select your bank, one through eight. Let's choose four. And then when you release, you have access to 16 patterns within that bank. We'll choose four again. If you want to create longer sequences, you can chain patterns together that are created in the same bank. If I hold these four pads down, that now means that these four patterns will play together one after the other in sequence. The one that's blinking is set to play next. The one that's solid is currently playing. Let's chain some patterns together and see what it sounds like. Another thing to think about if you're chaining patterns together is the tempo source. Do you want to use the original pattern tempo or the system tempo? Now, if you're creating a longer set where you want to chain multiple patterns together, you may actually want to set it to the system tempo so that the tempo holds throughout your set. Let's show you how to switch it up real quick. Press the utility button and locate tempo source. Press the value knob and switch to system. So now that we've set our tempo source to system, Let's set our tempo at 125 and chain some patterns together. You also have some other pattern settings available in the utility menu, including pattern lock. Turning that on will reload your original pattern if you revert back to it later on in your session, as well as start pattern. You can designate a pattern to load up on startup. To set the tempo of your pattern, press the tempo button here, turn the value knob to the left to slow down the beats per minute or BPM, turn to the right to speed it up. You can also use the shift button and the value knob to change incrementally by decimals. You also have the option of using shift press tempo to tap your tempo in like so. Let's hear what it sounds like on a pattern. If you want to add swing or bounce to your patterns, use the shuffle button here. You can turn it to the right for positive increments or to the left for negative increments. Let's hear what it sounds like in a classic TR909 hi-hat pattern. A note for producers, the TR6S is based off of classic TR grid-based sequencing. If you want to do unquantized or off-grid sequencing, you might want to consider another Roland product, the MC Groovebox. Let's get into programming some patterns. On the TR6S, there's two methods for this. The first is TR Record. In TR Record, you have 16 steps, and in the 16th scale, each one of these illuminated steps represents the beat. One, two, three, four. First, choose an instrument you want to enter, and then press the pad you want to play. Press it again to delete. To clear all the notes of a track, hold the clear button and press the instrument select button. Let's use TR record mode to make a simple house beat. Let's start with a bass drum, entering it on steps one, five, nine, and 13. Remembering that's the beat, four to the floor kick drum there. Let's add a hand clap on the two and the four, some hi-hats, let's put some random little snare hits in there as well. 
can kind of experiment as you go to see what feels right. There we go. The other way to create patterns on the TR6S is using Insta Record mode. In this mode, you can play pads in real time. As long as the pattern's playing, it'll write to the pattern. This method might be a little bit more instinctive for producers still familiarizing with TR Record and step sequencing. Let's use Insta Record to create a dance hall style beat. First thing I want to do is just create a metronome to play to using TR Record, and then we'll switch back to Insta Record mode. Here we go. To delete a pattern, simply hold clear and press the pattern that you want to get rid of. Patterns can contain up to eight variations. These variations are useful if you want to extend past 16 steps or if you want to create distinct sections of a song. To access variations, press the variation button here. You'll see these displayed as A through H, silk screened underneath and colored blue. Currently we're showing one variation. You can chain up to eight variations if you want. Just press all the buttons together. Note they're always going to play in alphabetical order, but you can create non-contiguous playing variations. So jump, say, from A to E, and they'll rotate back and forth chaining together. You can also edit variations that aren't playing by holding the TR record button. You'll notice right now that it's blinking purple. This means that we're both playing and editing the same variation. If I say you want to edit variation E, I can press that. We'll continue to play A, but now we're editing the red variation E. Let's check out how variation works on a pattern. So when I hit play, you'll notice variation A is blinking. That means it's playing. I can chain four together. I can also choose variations out of sequence. Still playing in alphabetical order going back and forth between the two. Each pattern can have an automatic or triggered fill-in using this fill-in trigger button right here. You can choose either variations A through H, one of the dedicated fill-in patterns, or a scatter effect. Scatter is a digital effect that loops and rearranges your patterns on the fly. You can edit both the scatter type and the scatter depth in the pattern setting menu. To assign a fill-in to a pattern, hold shift and press the fill-in trig button. Turn the value wheel to the right. Here you'll be able to access variations A through H, fill one, two, or scatter. You can also set your auto fill-in here, turning it on, and designate how many times it will cycle through your pattern. Let's try fill-in with a scatter effect on this pattern. Step loop is a great way to spice up a performance in real time, slicing up your pattern by holding down a single or multiple steps. Let's check it out. First, press the step loop button here. Start on your pattern. I can hold down a single step to repeat it. Tap it in as I like, or I can hold down multiple steps to create a different flavor. Everything's always quantized, so in this mode, you can really do no wrong. With last step, you can change the total amount of steps in a pattern to create different timings and interesting polyrhythms. You can apply last step to both single instruments or the pattern on a whole. Let's check out how it works. Let's start off by creating a simple pattern. Add a hi-hat. Looping the same way now. The hi-hat, you can hear it's not really changing much. So we can use last step to shorten the hi-hat pattern to create something a little more interesting. Hold shift and press step loop to enter last step. We selected the hi-hat pattern and we're just gonna pick a different step. 
Now you can hear the hi-hat doing something a little bit different and keeping it fresh. Pressing the sub button gets you to sub-step mode. Sub-step allows you to program flams or rolls on single hits, perfect for creating a ratchety type of hi-hats or more complex rhythms. Hold down the sub button to change the rhythmic intervals. You can program two, three, or four hits per step or a flam, which adds two steps in the 64th note rhythmic interval. You could also play the sub steps in real time by holding the sub button while in insta record or insta play mode. Let's check out how to use sub step in the creation of a pattern. We're gonna use both TR record and insta record to try a couple different things. Another cool feature for adding intricate detail to your patterns is motion. Motion allows you to record and playback knob movements as well as program parameter changes into your patterns. You can automate effects, create melodies and bass lines, or add other sound variations. To use motion, you'll first want to turn it on by holding shift and pressing the variation button. You'll now see on your LED that motion is on. And when I'm in TR record mode and playing my pattern, any knob movements here or my master effects button will be recorded and added to the pattern. You can also edit motion per step by long holding a step and then toggling through the parameters using copy and utility. So here we can see tune, decay, control, and velocity for this step. If you turn off your instrument, you can also hold a step and you'll have access to reverb, delay, delay time, delay feedback, and master effects on or off. Holding shift and variation at the same time allows you to erase motion from your whole pattern, individual variations, or individual parameters. Holding shift and pressing variation also gives you the ability to turn motion off. Let's record some motion into a pattern to see how it works. First, I'm gonna turn on Insta Record. And for this example, I'm gonna use my clothes hat, and I'm gonna record both tuning and morph data to the pattern. For those who are using the TR6S in a performance situation or maybe dealing with issues of MIDI lag or latency, you can use the nudge feature here to push or pull the tempo of your pattern. Let's have a quick listen to see how it works. Hold the shift button, copy to nudge slower, and utility to nudge faster. In addition to being able to program velocity data in the motion recording, you also have the ability to create weak beats as well as using accent to create more dynamics in your patterns. So let's have a quick look at how we could do that with a hi-hat pattern. First with weak beats, I'm gonna make a 16th pattern. Holding the shift, I can then designate weak beats like so. And now you can hear that the hi-hats on the one, two, three, four are louder. If I want to make them even more accentuated, I can come to the accent here by holding bass drum and snare drum together and say put it on the one, two, three, four. And I can use tune to change the accent amount here, creating a lot more dynamic in that hi-hat pattern. If we bring in the rest of the music, it's going to be pretty obvious what's happening. There's some additional functionality that you'll want to be aware of in the pattern setting menu, holding shift and pressing pattern select. First off, if you want to have a kit load every time you load the pattern, you can just switch that on here. Here's your kit number. And if you want to rename your pattern, you can also do this in this menu here. Next up, the utility menu is where you're going to find all your important system settings. To enter the utility menu, press the utility button here. This is where you're going to find display settings, various startup behavior, Sample import management, MIDI and sync settings, system backup, 
factory reset, and SD card formatting. One really useful function you're gonna find in the utility menu is reload. This is great for undoing changes to your instruments, kits, or your patterns, as well as if you've created something on the fly that you wanna to revert to the last saved version. Let's have a quick listen to see how we can use it in practice. So I'm gonna make some changes to my kit, my instrument, and my pattern. So it sounds pretty crazy now. I can easily revert back to it using utility, pressing kit, instrument, and pattern. And just like that, we get back to where we were. This can also be used for individual variations, as well as individual tracks by pressing the instrument button. Once you've created some patterns or made some changes to your system settings, you're probably gonna wanna save or write that to your TR6S. To get to your write menu, hold shift, press exit, and here you're gonna see first overwrite, which is gonna allow you to write both the pattern and the kit data in one action. Turn to the right to just write the pattern data or just write the kit data. And finally, you can write your system data as well. For a quick shortcut, hold exit and pattern select or exit and kit to write either of those, making sure you press value knob at the end to write the data. Let's show you how you can quickly copy a variation. I'm gonna hold the copy button here, press variation A and then variation B, and we've just executed a copy, easy as that. There's loads of additional information available about parameters, effects, keyboard shortcuts, and other options in the owner's manual, which you can download from the TR6S product page. As we've seen, the TR6S is an incredibly powerful and portable standalone drum machine, but it also works great in other setups as well, either with other gear or a DAW. In this next example, we're gonna use our TR6S with the MC-101, connecting with the MIDI output here to the MIDI input of the MC-101, when we hit start on the TR6S, they're gonna be in perfect sync with the MC-101 starting as well. And you can also change the tempo if you need to, to have the MC-101 follow the 6S in sync. You can also integrate the TR6S with your favorite DAW. Make sure that you've downloaded the driver from the TR6S product page specific to your OS and then install on your computer. Once installed, open your DAW and you'll see the TR6S appear in both the audio and MIDI preferences of your DAW settings. Thanks so much for checking out the TR6S video manual. My name is Matt Chaquan, AKA Recluse. If you are a TR6S owner, make sure that you register your product at roland.com to receive important updates, as well as an exclusive invite to Roland Cloud Academy, our online learning platform.